Traders, how are you? With Marcello. Today we're going to be doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. One interesting thing I'm going to share with you at the end of the video, because you know I've been sharing a lot of the natural disasters that they don't report on the mainstream media, is the movement of the North Pole. It has been moving faster in the last three months than in the last two years, which is actually something that's very interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. Overall for the week, markets in the US were mostly negative, very, very small, but we did have some news in terms of the overvaluation of stocks. According to Yale Economist and also Nobel Laureate, which means somebody who almost was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, Robert Schiller, he's showing that the S&P 500 now is 96%, 96% of all the quarters. So take the last 141 years, and 96% of all the quarters in the last 141 years, right now we are overvalued compared to those 96% of the 141 quarters. So basically we're just extremely overvalued right now. And the market eventually is going to have to drop or corrections or retracements. You know, when the market goes down and then it continues to go back up, eventually we're going to get one. It just it can't continue to keep going up and up and up and up. And when that actually happens, it's going to be very, very, very bloodly. Bloody, bloody is the word I wanted to use. So he says big cap stocks right now have been this expensive only four percent of the time in recorded history so we're literally just through the roof overvaluated other than that the s p 500 that's projected earnings it's 22 times the projected earnings in over the next 12 months that's over the amount of average which is about 18 as well another number that basically tells you that stocks are just extremely overvalued overseas market news the european markets were mostly lower this week spain took the number one spot as the biggest loser latin american and canadian markets mostly mixed canada was at a negative 1.02 percent middle east egypt was the shining the the shining star let's say at 3.69 percent positive even though the rest of the markets were mixed and then in the far east hong kong biggest winner there at 2.41 percent bitcoin and other cryptocurrency news not a lot of news in the crypto space other than the fact that if you guys remember that china's part of the reason why i wanted to do a video about the risk of investing in bitcoin not that it's you know i don't want to get all the haters because you know the fanatics in bitcoin come and they're like well nothing's wrong with bitcoin it's the best right so it's not that Bitcoin's not going to continue going up. I, I don't doubt that it's going to make a new record high, okay? But there are some risks associated with it. And so right now we have a situation where Bitcoin, if you guys remember, starting in May, crashed 50%. Ethereum did as well. And part of the reason was because China was removing all of the miners outside of China. They didn't want the miners anymore. So what's actually happening now is they're saying that those Chinese miners that are dumping the GPUs, the, gra the graphics processing units they're saying that a lot of those are being decommissioned and they're not actually coming back online so some analysts are actually saying that crypto prices are in a bit of danger because that processing power is gone and it's actually not coming back not to say that it could eventually come back you know capitalism in the u.s they could hop in but for right now that could be a little bit of an issue overall for the week bitcoin is down 7.35 percent we went down to 31,578 and change it's still up about 8.59 percent for the year commodities lumber finally came Cape down it completely eradicated all of its gains for 2021 if you guys remember at one point lumber futures were at four times the price of what they were the year before and so for example if you guys remember it added the cost of about thirty thousand forty thousand dollars to a house if you wanted to build a new house u.s crude for the week negative 3.92 percent it went to 71.81 and then brent international brent went down to 2.71 73.59 it was at Year over year, 76% American crude, Brent International is up over 70% year over year. And part of the reason why they came down, obviously, is because of the situation with the, the Delta variant, with, you know, it's exploding in places like Europe and then in Asia as well. So that obviously turns the, the expectation that we're not going to have the kind of economic recovery that we want. Things are going to close down again, which means less demand for oil. That's why we had that bit of a drop. Precious metals for the week, gold. 
positive 0.23% at 1,813. Silver was negative 1.82% at about 2,574. A lot of the silver miners, you guys know, if you guys have been following me for a while, I, I trade quite a bit. I swing trade the silver miners and beautiful drops that we had. You know, remember what, what daddy, what Uncle Buffett always says, Warren Buffett, buy when others are greedy. Excuse me, it's backwards. Be fearful when others are greedy and be fearful greedy when others are fearful. When the market crashes, that's when we look to maybe look for some opportunities. Financing and banking news, the G20 gathering in Venice, Italy for the first time face-to-face -face since the COVID hit. They're, you know, G20, 75% of global trade, 60% of, of world population. They are aimed at passing that new minimum tax law, a little bit more for that new world order, right? Government coins right around the corner. World Health Organization, you know, everything that one world, new world order is coming where well, they're saying that the new global minimum rate, they want to be able to try to approve that in the next time that they meet in Rome in October. And they want to have a minimum tax rate of 15 percent. U.S. consumer prices last month increased at the fastest pace in over a decade, year over year. The CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, jumped 5%, which is the biggest jump since August of 2008. And the core measure rose 3.8%, which is the highest since 1992. So in other words, things are going to get really expensive really fast. So buckle up. Not only do we have the record heat that's calling crops to actually stop uh, you know, killing crops. We have the drought, record drought also in the West. Remember, California has grows the majority of the food in the United States. Obviously, the Midwest as well is having trouble with drought, not drought, but with in, inundations of water. And so what I would recommend you guys do is have some extra food, maybe have some canned food that'll last you for a little bit more than a week or two, just in case anything happens, because I have a feeling the preppers were right. Democrats in the U.S. Senate unveiled legislation for a massive $3.5 trillion anti-poverty education and climate bill. This is part of the reason why we're seeing this huge jump in actual prices, the amount of debt. You know, I, I always share this with you guys every few episodes that I do for these videos. But when we had in, in Clinton, and, and I don't want to be political, right? Because it's both sides, it's not just the left or the right. So I don't want to kind of say, you know, it's the left's fault or it's the right fault. I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's driving the car. One just drives it slower off the cliff, basically. So Clinton removed a part of what's called the Glass-Steagall Act, which was passed after the Depression in 1929-ish, you know, right around those dates. And part of this was that brokers who invest in the stock market in risky assets like stocks that can go up and down are separate from banks where you have your savings. And the idea behind this is that was a wall that could not be crossed where the banks could not take your savings and put it in the stock market into risky assets. Well, Clinton removed part of that law, ergo 2008-2009 financial crisis. Then Bush came in, added these numbers off the top of my head, so don't quote me on this, if I'm not mistaken, about $5.7 trillion in debt. Then Obama came in, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he added about $8 trillion in debt. So we had Bush add about 5.7, then Obama added 8, most ever since any other president combined in the history of the United States. Then Trump comes in, COVID hits, he adds over $7 trillion. I believe his number is about 7.7 .7 or 6.7 .7 right in there. But again, the idea behind this is 5.7 in, in the eight years of Bush. Then we have $8 trillion or so in the eight years of Obama. And then Trump added, and remember, Obama was the most than any other president combined in the history of the U.S. And then Trump almost does the same as Obama, only in four years. And now we have a Biden adding literally the same amount of debt in a short record of time. So now we have, I, I, off the top of my head, it's about 50 to 70% of what Trump did in literally the first year. And now they're tacking on another $3.5 trillion. So this is part of the reason why we're having this huge increase in prices is because the demand for the dollar. So 40% of the dollars in circulation right now, 40% were not there when the COVID hit. So before COVID, we had 40% less dollars. More dollars, more supply, less demand. Supply and demand. So the value of the dollar has been going down and what's actually happening on top of that is the problem with the production, the, the production ch chain. I'm saying it backwards. Anyway, 
products aren't able to come in, you know, COVID, we have shutdowns, the, the prices of the containers, we have blockages in, in ports, you know, all kinds of things are starting to affect all these production centers and the production chain. And so add to the top of the fact that we don't have enough products, the market, the world started opening up again, demand surges, not enough products. What happens to the, to the product price? It goes up because supply and demand. And so buckle your seat, folks. Because it's going to get it's going to get serious very soon. Other than that, on Thursday, UK inflation also rose since the highest in three years. In political news in Texas, the Democrats hopped on a private jet and went to Washington, D.C., not allowing the Republicans to pass a law that they wanted to pass, what Greg Abbott in Texas called easier to vote, harder to cheat. And so the Republicans now, at least Greg, Greg Abbott said, that as soon as they come back to Texas, they're going to arrest the Democrats. And you can see it's just a big fiasco all over the country. It's just this polarizing left and right. Remember, always when I try to do these videos, it's not about whether you're left or right. I try to stay neutral, just reporting the facts. That's what happened in Texas. Whether you like it or don't, I'll leave that up to you. In economic news on Tuesday, Cuba is experiencing the worst economic crisis in years. The government is blaming U.S. sanctions and the pandemic, while a lot of detractors are basing, are, are basing it on the socialist communist system that Cuba has been running for the last 40 years. Venezuela has socialism. Argentina has socialism. Not very good places to be. Other than that, the economy contracted 10.9%, and there's been riots all over Cuba, in addition to places like Tampa and even Miami, where there's a lot of Cuban uh, nationals. And one of the things that's very interesting is, in the meantime, while we have, you know, the Biden and the current administration, in addition to the Democrats, are very open to immigration. However, when this is happening in Cuba, Biden is saying that, no, 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 don't, don't cross the sea. It's going to be very dangerous. We're, we're not going to let you come here. And I wonder why that is. wonder if it's because Cubans vote for the right, Republicans and not Democrats. You see how it works? See the double standard? Corporate news, JP Morgan Chase, Biggest U.S. bank by assets reported a great quarter two profit and revenue, which exceeded the expectations. They made $31.4 billion in revenue. Their, their revenue did fall from a year ago, but their stock obviously is still doing well. Goldman Sachs as well, one of the most important financial entities, not only in the United States, but in the world, had its second highest revenue quarter ever, only to pass the first quarter in 2021. So 2021 was the biggest record and the second quarter of 2021 is the second biggest ever i wonder why they want to keep doing the lockdowns could it be that all these big companies are making record profits hmm. virgin galactic 70 year old founder richard branson had a successful flight into space on sunday this is the first time that they had a private uh, you know non-governmental people go into space he's saying that there is a one trillion dollar market for space tourism at a price point of 250 to 500 thousand dollars a pop and that could support about 20 space firms and in addition to that he's saying that uh, well, the, the stock, I should say, had quite a ride as well. When he announced it and he was going on the trip, it exploded and then it crashed on Monday of this week over 17%. You know, I guess it wasn't that exciting. But anyway, technology on Tuesday, Volkswagen, which has either been the largest automaker in the world or the second largest, is stating that 50% of its sales are expected to be battery electric vehicles by 2030. By 2040, almost 100% is going to be only uh, electric to have possibly the zero emission vehicles to be able to go ahead and protect the environment. Wednesday, Singapore unveiled one of the world's largest floating solar panels in the world, a 60 megawatt park. If you guys don't know about Singapore, it's literally in an island, think of like Bahamas, for example, or the Florida Keys. They're literally just an island. And what they've done over the years is land reclam reclamation. So if, if this is Singapore, the island, what they'll do is they'll start to add land by taking over the sea little by little. So they wouldn't be able to do this to go ahead and support quadruple its solar energy production by 2025, especially since they want to power their five water treatment plants. They have no natural resources, no oil, no water, nothing. So they need to be able to try to support their energy somehow in a renewable way to be able to go ahead and try to save the, the environment, they're stating. In international events, escalating tensions between Japan and China, the government of China is saying that the annual defense white paper that the growing military tension around Taiwan is 
leaning in China's favor due to what China is doing. Meanwhile, China is saying that what Chip Ban is saying is, is ridiculous, basically, just to sum it up. So obviously those tensions are continuing to go up. And if you guys don't know the situation in Taiwan, Taiwan is basically saying that they're an independent country while China is saying that they're a rogue province of China. Other than that, Japan's government announced on Monday that they're having a new COVID state of emergency due to the Delta variant. There's also other Asian countries as well, like South Korea, Indonesia, and Malaysia as well, that are talking about the same thing. North Korea on Tuesday is talking about the worst food shortages in decades. Remember what I told you guys in the beginning? So it's literally everywhere. We're having record heat, record drought in the US and Canada. We got record amount of volcanoes going off, earthquakes. I don't know if you guys have seen the sinkholes, the recently one in Florida, but there's literally been at least 20 or 30 in Mexico, in addition to the other ones in Asia and Europe. I believe Croatia, Turkey was the one that literally just a bunch of sinkholes are opening up in the middle of their, their growing, their food growing season. Pretty interesting. I'm going to talk to you guys about that here in a second. Other than that, they're saying that they're going to brace for one of the biggest domestic challenges since Kim Jong-un came to power and the food production dropped to its lowest level since 2018. Tuesday, South Africa, worst violence in years over crowds that clashed with police and looted or burned shopping malls. There, There's a video that's going through social media talking about how they were specifically attacking and killing white people and Indians there in South Africa. Dozens reportedly killed. Grievance is unleashed by jailing the former president Jacob Zuma due to corruption and theft. And I want you guys to pay attention to what's going to happen in South Korea, excuse me, South Africa right now. Pay attention to it because I think that's what's going to start to happen in other places. I do a lot more videos on the Spanish side, but one of the things that I've mentioned on the Spanish side a lot over the last few years is the next 10 years, we're going to have a lot of economic problems. We're going to have a lot of natural disaster problems, and we're also going to have a lot of social problems as well. In unusual facts this week, a new study, NASA is stating that the high tide flooding predicted in the mid 2030s will be catastroph catastrophically wet. They're saying that a lot of the U.S. coastal regions could stay away for stay away with these disasters for an entire decade. I don't think it's because of the moon wobble. I think it's going of something else, which I'm going to share with you guys in a second. And also, Eiffel Tower reopened for the first time on Friday after nine months since the COVID started, even though they're starting to have a fourth pandemic surge there in France, where the president has decided that people can't go into restaurants without a vaccine. Thank God for Florida and Texas, right? Where they passed a law saying that they can't mandate that. Remember what the Bible said, guys, with the mark of the beast. Other than that, in natural disasters, Germany and Belgium was the worst hit this week with a, a huge flood that, that literally knocked out an entire town. 80 people were died in Western Germany. 1,500 people are still missing. Luxembourg and Netherlands also were hit. There's huge fires in Siberia and Oregon. In Siberia alone, there are 800,000 hectares of, of forest fires. There's a picture I'm sure that they'll show you here on the images of Oregon, just a huge cloud of smoke. It's, it's just amazing. Explosion on the far side of the of the sun was felt here on Earth. So this is Earth. This is sun. Right on the other side, not the close side, but the far side, there was an explosion that we actually felt. And there's something called the Carrington event that if you guys didn't know, on September 12th of 1859, there was a coronal mass ejection. Uh, think of it like a solar storm, where you know it's it's uh, like popped out a bit of its material, hit Earth. And there are people reporting that it literally took out parts of our electrical grid that we had at the time, which is called the, te the telegraph system, the first en energy that we had that we know of, Atlantis and Lemire and Mew. But the last CME that hit us, that actually missed us by nine days was in 2012. So this is one of the things, for example, that could possibly happen again. Look up the Carrington event. You guys will find it on Wikipedia or on Google, for example. Or you can go to DuckDuckGo, the search engine where it won't, you won't get censored. And it's actually pretty interesting because these are the kind of things that I think are going to happen. And major power outage in Central America cut electricity for 15 million residents. Imagine how many things you can buy with Bitcoin without the electricity. Hmm. And in regards to the North Pole, if you guys haven't seen, the North Pole is basically moving from Canada down to Russia at an exceedingly increasing rate. Over the last three months, the, the North Pole has moved faster than in the last two years. And in my opinion, part of the activity of the sun, which is, you know, I've researched this quite a bit if you guys want to research it, but basically the activity from the sun and the increased activity and the movement of our North Pole is weakening our magnetic 
protection that we have in the Earth, and that's causing the ionosphere, which is the highest atmospheric level that we have on Earth, to become charged. And that's, in my opinion, what's causing all of these kind of uh, unusual situations, right? We have the sinkholes because the Earth is moving, right? There's, there's a destabilization happening. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week.